Hello friends, welcome. Welcome to this presentation from Rising Pearl. I'm your friend, your host Roy. We are discussing series 1, Real Numbers. This is episode number 10. Today's topic, friends, is prime factorization and the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Let's get started. Now, we have seen in our earlier movies, what do we mean by fundamental theorem of arithmetic? What it states is the following. Every composite number, every single composite number can be expressed as product of primes in one and only one unique way if we do not consider the order in which the prime numbers are written. So it means that, let's say, if we take a composite number x, then we can write x as a product of p1 multiplied by p2 multiplied by p3 multiplied by p4 multiplied by p5 dot 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 multiplied to pn, where these p1, 2, 3, 4, pn are all prime numbers. So we take a composite number, any composite number x, we absolutely can write this as product of prime numbers where they are all prime numbers and this is what we is the basic definition of fundamental theorem of arithmetic now friends if you recall isn't this really what is what we have studied in our earlier classes as prime factorization yes yes indeed that is you take any number and by that we are talking about composite number you can break that composite number down as product of its prime and like the fundamental theorem of arithmetic is stating that there is one and only one unique way of doing that. So let's take some examples. So let's start out maybe, you know, taking some small examples. Let's say the number 20. We can write the number 20 as 2 multiplied by 10. Now 2 is a prime, so we cannot break 2 down anymore. But 10, we can break 10 as 2 times 5. Now, both 2 and 5 are prime, so we cannot break it down anymore. So, the number 20 can be written as 2 multiply by 2 times 5. Now, friends, so this way, what we did was, we started out with a composite number, number 20. And we have written number 20 as product of its prime numbers. And this is the only way that the number 20 can be expressed as product of its prime. So similarly, let's take one more example. This time, let's say, um, let's take maybe a little bit bigger number. How about we take 1, 3, 4, 0. And I'm just randomly picking some numbers. You can take any number of your choice. I know because the number ends with a 0 that it will be a composite number because it can be divisible by 10. So in this case, we can write this as 10 multiply by 1, 3, 4. 1, 3, 4. Now 10, we can write this as 2 times 5. 2 times 5. And for 1, 3, 4, we can write this as 2 multiply by, let's see. So, I think we have to do the division here. So, 2, 6, 12, 1, 4, 67. 67. And I think 67 is a prime number. So, at this point, the, the, we cannot break down any of these numbers anymore because these are all prime numbers so one three four zero so the number one three four zero can be written as two times five times two times sixty seven it is just standard practice to write the prime number in ascending order so we can write this as two multiply by Two, we can get this 2 in the front times 5 times 67. So again, friends, we saw that we have randomly taken any composite number and we express that as product of its prime. Now, before we wrap up, friends, we will do one other way of uh, finding out the prime factorization again. Basically, we are doing the same thing, but maybe in a little different way. And you have done this in your earlier classes. So, uh, 
here let's say we are trying to find out the prime factor for 8 maybe just 81 so what we do is it's kind of like a little bit in a table format so we do it this way uh, so we start out 81 now 81 can be divisible by 3 why because if you add 8 and 1 it is 9 and 9 is divisible by 3 so we start out by 3 now the quotient we write it here so 3 2s are 6 and then 8 minus 6 will be 2 and 1 carry over and then 3 7s are 81 now because this is a quotient we try to break this down again 2 plus 7 is 9 which is divisible by 3 so we know that 27 can be divided by 3 so we do this as so now 3 9s are 27 and then 9 can be divided by 3 3 3s are 9 and then again 3 can be divided by 3 itself and you have 1 so in this case this these are all the prime factors for 81 that means 81 can be written as 81 can be written as 3 times so 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 there are 4 3's in here 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 so I can leave it at this or I can just simply say that because there are all the 3's I can say 3 to the power of 4 so again this is prime factorization done a little bit differently and you have done this in your earlier classes and from fundamental theorem of arithmetic we know that 81 is a composite number and this can be expressed as product of primes and this is the only way in which we can express 81 as product of its prime so before we wrap up maybe let's take a small example how about we do 121 0 so here we will start out by saying maybe like let's take 2 so 2 6 are 12 then 0 and then 5 then we can divide this by 5 so 5 1s are 5 2s are 10 5 1s are 5 now 1 2 1 can be divided by 11 11 11 are 1 2 1 and then 11 can be divided by 11 and remainder 1 so the number 2 1 1 2 1 0 1 2 1 0 another randomly taken composite number we can express this as 2 times 2 times 5 times 11 times 11 so we write this as 2 times 5 times 11 times 11 so friends again we are ex we took a composite number and we could express that as product of its prime so fundamental theorem of arithmetic directly leads us to the prime factorization in the next video we will take a look at we will revisit some of the divisibility rules